go back to actually doing a drake. I'm going to show you a drake merger, a drake soft tackle. I love to fish this time of year. It's very similar to what we have in the store. Don't actually have a name for this one. It's just my, just a drake merger, just a drake soft tackle I tie up and I fish. And again, it can be fished wet, it can be fished dry by itself, trailing behind something. So again, with our drakes around here, one thing that you may not know is the drakes that we have around here, they're a little different than what you might hear. Everyone hears of the great western green drake. Uh, we don't actually have western green drakes in our state. We have the Colorado green drake. Now the Colorado green drake is a little different actually. It's not dark green like the western green drake is. Our Colorado drake is actually more of an olive dun. It's like an olive and gray. In fact, this is the perfect color I like for this. This stuff, I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm try this again. There you go. Olive done. Okay, now this olive done is a really kind of gray, olive, smoky color. Most of our drakes around here are actually this color. They're not the super dark green ones that you see up in Idaho or anywhere else. And they don't actually have a yellow ribbing. They actually have more of a rusty brown. Okay, so that's our main hatch that we see around here, and they're happening on the Provo as we, as we, as we sat and talk today. As we speak, uh, I saw them on Tuesday on my guide trip. They were down around on the lower portion of the middle. The fish weren't quite up on them yet, but it is the time, as I've been telling people in our fishing reports, you want to make sure that you have these bugs. So again, I could use the black. I'm going to switch it up here a little bit. Thread-wise, we're going to go with a uni. You can see that. Let's get this. There you go. I like this olive done. That's a great color and a good diameter for what we're going to be tying with. Size 12 fly. And that's the size you want for around here. Size 12s. I don't like to do size 10s. Our fish see so much pressure that go with a skinny sparse fly. You often will have better luck fishing that than you will any other one. So do this fly. Same thing, we're just going to put down a nice even thread layer. We're not going to start right behind the eye. Go down a little bit, we're just going to put down a nice even thread base. Because again, green drakes are actually chunkier than your average mayfly, so it's okay to put a little bit of an extra thread base down. You want to make sure that your fly has that same taper. Okay. Now we're going to take this Danville, this is kind of a rusty brown, single strand, this four strand rayon floss. I'm not sure if you guys can see that color there. You see how it's kind of got that rusty orange or rusty brown to it? That's a really good color for what we see on uh, as the ribbing on our Drake's Ranch. Again, the Colorado Green Drake is a little different coloration than some of the other Drake's around the West. So we're going to tie that down. And we're going to come into our tail and we're going to dub up this body here. Hitch the locker down, tie back. Again, no need to go back too far. Get that out of the way. All right, let's see here. Where is my. Ah, there it is. So for the tail, the hackle collar I like to use for drakes. You could use partridge, like I've been using for some of the flies. But I love hen hackle. Hen hackle is one of my favorites. I substitute hen hackle for a lot of things because you can actually get your uh, get the right size of hen hackle and it palmers real nice. What I'm going to use today is actually medium dyed done. Uh, most of our drakes actually have darker wings, so I don't like to use a super lightweight wing or super light colored wing. I like to use a little bit of a darker hackle because the wings when the drakes first come out are actually a little bit darker. And the fish do take care of this. Plus, one thing that you may not know is that it's a dark overcast day, which again, you actually want overcast days if you're looking for drakes. They, any mayfly hatch, they come off better when it's cloudy and overcast. A darker wing on a cloudier day makes it easier for you to see the fly. It's sound kind of counterintuitive, but the darker the day, you want to use a fly with a darker wing. It'll stand out easier. And you'll be able to see it against that backdrop, that silver glare in the water. That's why we'd use them. So I'm going to use, for that uh, tailing material, I'm going to use the same thing I'm going to use for the hackle collar. I really like this dark dun, or this medium dun. It's soft. And one thing, again, it doesn't have to be a super long, wispy tail for drakes. Their tails are actually kind of, uh, especially the duns, they're kind of chunky. The whole fly itself is chunkier than most mayflies. So we just take a little twist. We're going to tie it in here right at the base. 
Pinch and lock her down. Make sure she's locked in. And same thing, we're going to wrap up. And then wrap down, make sure that we maintain that nice, even taper to the body. We don't want it to be fat at the end. We want it to be a little bit chunkier at the back. There's our tail. Now, we're going to come up. We're going to use that extremely fine natural dubbing, the olive done. A little bit of natural dubbing wax. I use saliva. Use that in a pinch, just threaten, just nice and lubricates it. Not near as sticky as dubbing wax either. We're just going to take a little wisp. Again, we want to make sure that we roll it tight at the end here where we're connecting it and then not so tight as we go up. We want to make sure that that bug goes from being skinny towards the tail to being fat. And with drakes, it's okay to actually have a fat fly. I know some people really struggle with their proportions. With green drakes though, it's actually okay to be chunky. You want the fly to be a little chunkier than what you might expect. So we're gonna wrap that. Again, if you wanna make sure they're really tight, every time you wrap, you twist. And then we're gonna start building it up as we go. Yes? How long did it take you to develop a knife with portions on your dummy? Oh, it took a little bit of time. You know, I mean, it took time. The only way you get good at it is just by doing it and practicing it. Um, you know, it just, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Some people like the chunky fly. Um, but I just, you know, it came down to just, you know, practicing with it. And just like I said, if you want your flies to be more tapered with the dubbing, usually you want your fly to be really tapered and skinny at the end. So you want to make sure you really, make sure, one, you don't put on too much dubbing. The less is always better than, you know, too much. I actually like to use less and then I always add on more if I go. And the other thing is just to make sure that, you know, when you're really trying to put it on there, again, a little bit of saliva helps that dubbing really stick to the thread. And the other thing is, again, if you think about it, you want to make sure you twist in one direction. Twist in the same direction. Don't go back and forth. Twist. If you're going to twist clockwise, twist clockwise. Don't twist clockwise and then counterclockwise. Just twist one direction. It forms a nice dubbing rope and you can make it real tight or as loose just depending on how many twists and turns you want to do that's a great question does that answer it hopefully for you yes, sir. perfect so we're just going to keep on dubbing this up here because we want to make sure that we get this nice little bit more of a fat body because again drakes are not a super sparsely tied bug so i'm going to wrap up and kind of wrap back and wrap up I'll do a little bit more because we want it to be a little thicker. There go. A little bit more. Yeah, take half as much. We don't need that much. Okay. Give it a little twist. There we go. Wrap up. Kind of help build that thorax up. Okay. Now, we can't forget about our friend here, the floss. This is that four strand rayon floss. So, I could have it be really fat and lay out. See how it's kind of more like, it's actually kind of laid out, it's not as tight. I want this to be rope. Because this whole idea of this floss is to actually act as like a counter rib. So I want this thing to make sure it locks down this dubbing and make sure that this fly doesn't come apart after a fish or two wax it. I want my flies to last multiple fish. So we're going to wrap it. Again, it's going up kind of at an angle and we twist it as we go. Making these nice concentric wraps as we go up here, forming this nice rib. Okay, come up here, tie her off. And just because I want to make sure I have a little bit more of a thorax, I'm actually going to hit up with a little bit more dubbing right here at the front. Yeah, just a little pinch goes a long way. There we go. That's not bad at all. Now, we gotta put a hackle collar on this bad boy. And again, don't wanna over hackle our flies. So I'm gonna go in here and my medium done. Kinda eyeball it here. Yeah, it's about perfect. It's the same thing as before, everybody. 
when I tie these on, I know some people you've read, you know, tie in your soft tackles by starting by tying in the stem first and then wrapping forward. I do the opposite. Um, the reason is because again, I want to make sure that I really can lock them down. And I want the bigger feather, you know, I want to make sure that I'm getting that big heavy collar right up front and out of the way. So I strip it down, pull the fibers out. I'm going to actually carry a little bit of a notch. I'm going to pull out some of that because I don't want these to be overdressed. Okay, I'm going to come up here, tying that stem. Okay, two tight wraps. Then I pull that stem back. And I wrap back this way. That really locks it in. That's not going to go anywhere. Okay. That helps lock that in nice and tight. Come in here and trim it. Now you might notice, it's hard to maybe see, I actually stripped off that little bit of the feather there. Okay, I did it on purpose so that the feather, the stem itself would roll around that front part of the hook real nice and it would actually evenly displace those hackle fibers so it doesn't get all built up and too chunky and clunky right at the front there. It gives you a nice clean head. And again, you can do it whatever way you want. This is just how I tie mine. Let me get that pinched in there. Make sure it's in there. So again, we're going to wrap. And we're going to wrap back towards that thorax. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to hold that up. Nice and tight. I'm actually going to go through again to make sure your your thread doesn't trap down too many of those hackle fibers. I call it the Z technique. You zig and zag them. That actually helps make sure the thread doesn't trap down too many fibers. Collapse the wing. Come in here. Just give it a little trim. There it is. And then what I'm going to do is going to get that feather. We gotta get that thread, excuse me, back through the feather. So same thing, we're just gonna zig. And like so, thread is back through, but it's actually locked down those feathers. So that sucker is not gonna get, uh, you know, if it gets eaten by a couple trout or a bunch of fish, it shouldn't just have the hackles come popped off loose. It's gonna really lock her down. And then again, when you whip finishing, we go front to back. Come over here, we're gonna wrap her. Get that base started. You can also push them back if you want. One, two, three. Make sure she's nice and tight. Give her a trim. And there you go. Nice, simple little drake. I oftentimes, this is one of my ace in the hole patterns. I could have made it a little bit thicker, maybe dubbed it a little bit fatter, gone back more on the hook shank. But again, one of the things that I have found over the years of guiding and fishing around here, especially places where there are lots of drakes and people fishing drakes, is that these fish, they get hit by every pattern known to man, especially the big, really big fat patterns. It's the patterns we all love to fish, the really big poofy ones. It doesn't take too long for those fish, though, to get pretty, you know, on top of that. So by going with the skinny sparse pattern, especially after those fish have seen and been hooked by a couple of drakes, it's got a good profile to it. And again, what's so nice about this fly is that those hen hackles are soft. The fly will sit a little lower in the water column. You can fish with this thing ungreased behind a dry fly. You can fish with it greased up like a dry fly, like a mayfly cripple. You can swing it like a soft tackle. Again, that's what the whole presentation is. You can swing this fly prior to the hatch, grease it up, and fish it in the film or on the surface during the hatch. Soft tackles are only limited by what you do with them. And this is a fly, it's you know very simple. But again, this whole formula, just keeping it simple and using this type of formula. The tails and the hackles have to match the wing and the tails, the natural. You can make this into a PMD. 
uh, lesser green drake like a flav, pale evening dun, blue wing. This simple little style here catches fish for varieties of different mayflies just tied in different sizes and different colors of materials. It works.